This is hole number one of the Green Naval 47, a hybrid motor yacht that was designed for boat owners who not only care about the environment, but who also care about their budgets. During a recent trip to Antalya in Turkey, I had the opportunity to film aboard hole number one as she came towards the end of her fitting out period. The GN47 has a battery powered range of around 30 nautical miles whilst cruising at just under seven knots and she can cruise for two hours per day just from the power gathered by her 22 square meters of solar panels. And thanks to her two 22 kVA generators, which can be used for emergency propulsion and as an energy source, the GN47 has a range of 2000 nautical miles whilst cruising at about six knots. Options include installing a wind generator or hydro generator into the boat. Before we take a look inside the boat, I just want to summarize the specifications of this innovative and clever vessel. She has a length overall of 14.3 meters with a beam of 4.15 meters. She has a draft of one meter and a displacement of 12 tons. The GN47 has a top speed of just under 11 knots and a cruising speed of six and a half knots. Her electric motors comprise two 60kW Torquedo AC brushless motors. Her battery bank includes a 50kWh Johnson control system and her genset comprises a polar power 22kVA system. The maximum power at her crankshaft is 80 horsepower and the maximum speed at her crankshaft is 1400 RPM. She's a CE category A vessel and when running in hybrid mode at six knots, you can expect a range of around two and a half thousand nautical miles. Increase the speed to seven knots and that range reduces to 2000 nautical miles. In pure electric mode, when cruising at 5.5 knots, then you can expect a range of 50 nautical miles and when cruising at seven knots in pure electric mode, her range is 21 nautical miles. Her hull and superstructure are made out of marine grade aluminium. And now let us take a look inside the GN47. We will start by looking around her main deck before heading down into the lower deck. One of the first things I noticed as I walked around the starboard side deck was how wide the side decks are. The high gunnels help make you feel safe and secure which is essential when you are at sea and moving around the boat. Indirect lighting on the deck is also a really nice touch. As we emerge onto the foredeck, you first notice the three large sun pads, a perfect place to sit back and relax as you enjoy the uninterrupted views forward. The deck gear for the anchor system is neatly placed in a position that makes the system easy to operate without getting in the way as you walk around the upper deck. I really love the lines of the GN47. She has a serious yet playful feel to her and I love how the dark finish blends in with the white detail. Here you get a sense of how much natural light can enter the forward cabin thanks to these large windows. As we walk around the boat, just keep in mind that the technicians were on board making the final and finishing touches to the boat ready for her delivery. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's get to 50K ASAP. As we walk back along the port side, notice the large windows. You will see the incredible views from the inside and how much natural light can enter the living areas thanks to these large windows in a minute. This can actually be opened up to create an even bigger outdoor space. The same feature can also be found on the starboard side. Heading aft, we enter the cockpit and you notice a seating area on the transom. There is also a handcrafted table with an almost mirror-like finish. Access to the cockpit when boarding aft is via a set of stairs on the starboard side, which lead down to the swim platform. I like the retractable canopy and how the indirect lighting creates a very luxurious yet comfortable feeling. As we enter the saloon, we find a galley area to port in front of the galley is a seating area that, as you will see in a minute, can also be converted into an extra berth. To starboard is the helm position with some more seating located behind the helm. As we ascend the stairs which lead up from the accommodation area, we get a forward to aft perspective of this space. The ceiling height in the saloon is an impressive 2.1 meters. 
and the large sliding doors create a seamless connection between the saloon and the cockpit. Here's the seating area which can also be converted into another berth should you need it. From the helm position you get great views all around the vessel thanks to the large side windows and large reverse raked windows. You can just imagine what this area looks and feels like once the sun has gone down and the LED lighting takes full effect. Next we find ourselves in the forward master cabin looking aft. Again the headspace in here thanks to the raised area on the foredeck is 2.1 meters. Next we find ourselves in the ensuite. There's a huge basin in here next to the toilet and there's plenty of shelving space for all of your toiletries. I also really love the size of the large walk-in shower with the rain head fitting. If like me you've been known to spend quite a bit of time in the shower there's also a seating area. The water tank on board can hold 555 litres whereas the waste tank can hold 670 litres. Next we enter one of the guest cabins which comprises a twin single. Each bed has its own light and reading light and notice the fantastic use once again of the indirect lighting. There's also a small porthole that can be opened for ventilation. And finally we come to the last remaining twin single. It was great to be able to have a look around these accommodation areas even though the vessel wasn't finished at the time of filming. Hopefully once she is ready for handover I can come back and give you a more detailed tour of the accommodation and living areas. Remember to let me know what you think of them in the comments below. And now let us head up to the flybridge and take a look around up there. Access to the flybridge is via this staircase that can be found on the starboard side of the cockpit. There is a seating area on the port side with a table. On the starboard side is a serving area with lots of storage. As we head forward we find the helm station over to starboard and opposite the helm station on the port side is another seating area. Once you've lifted off the cover to the helm you find the throttle control levers for the torpedo system on the starboard side. Midships is where we find the B&G and Raymarine digital chart and radar display. On the port side we find the control lever for the bow thruster. When stood at the helm position on the flybridge you get amazing 360 degree views all around the vessel. As you peer over the windshield on the flybridge you get a full view of the solar panels. Having them here is incredibly handy when it comes to general maintenance and cleaning. It's worth pointing out that Naval Yachts, the yard behind the GN47, is open to a certain amount of customization. From what you've seen so far, what would you customize? Let me know in the comments below. The flybridge is protected from the beating rays of the sun thanks to the large hardtop. The large hardtop creates the perfect amount of shade and the indirect lighting generates a warm and soft ambience the perfect place to enjoy some drinks with family and friends. The radar arch with the housing unit for the Raymarine digital Doppler radar is neatly positioned on the aft section of the hardtop. It's where we also find the aerials for the vessel's GPS and AIS antenna. The vessel's air draft excluding the mast is 3.65 meters. As we peer over the aft section of the flybridge we get a great view of the swim platform. Note the door to port on the swim platform that leads into the lazarette and engine room. The engine room aboard the GN47 is a feat of engineering. Considering how complicated the propulsion system is from a design and engineering perspective, naval yachts have still somehow managed to fit not one but two electric motors, a battery bank and two generators in this space. It is also worth pointing out that the generators, when needed, consume just 6 litres of fuel per hour. If you are interested in building your very own GN47, then prices start from 1.8 million US dollars. If you are interested in finding out more and would like a brochure, then please fill out the expression of interest form, the link for which will be in the video description. 
Propulsion systems such as the one found on the GN47 are the future, and this Motios is very much a futuristic looking vessel. In fact, you would be forgiven for thinking that the GN47 had been sent back from the future. But what do you think? As ever, let me know in the comments below. As always, I'd like to thank my channel members for supporting my YouTube channel. If you'd like to become a channel member, click on the join button that appears underneath the video, or you can follow the link in the video description. As a channel member, you'll get access to loads of perks, including behind the scenes content and also exclusive updates. If you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to give this video a like so that more people on YouTube will get to see it. Also, don't forget to check out my other videos and playlists. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.